a shrub native to the Americas, Africa, and India. Like many other plants, wild cotton develop fibers around its seeds to better catch the wind and help disperse its seeds farther. These fibers have been used to make clothing for millenniums, as far back as 5000 BC. However, the laborious process of removing seeds from the cotton fibers prevented it from ever becoming economically viable. That changed in 1793 with the invention of the cotton gin, which automated the separating process and made cotton the largest exported crop in the US. While creating a large new market, the unintended consequences of the cotton gin inadvertently led to the increase of slavery in the US and ultimately the American Civil War. Cotton requires a warm, dry climate with lots of sunshine, which limits its growth to the southern US, an area referred to as the Cotton Belt, which means I'll have to take another trip for this material, this time to the largest cotton growing region in the world, West Texas. All right, so after an early flight this morning, I'm in West Texas, about 80 miles south of Lubbock's I have never actually seen cotton field before. So this just looks weird. It's a bunch of little shrubs just growing cotton balls. Before I even arrived, I learned that the timing of the cotton harvest is highly dependent on the weather. A rain several days before I got there threatened to prevent me from being able to pick anything. I feel like I picked a lot more than just this. After collecting my cotton by hand, I was taken over to another field where the farmers were actually machine harvesting. Here, I got to see the amazing speed in which an entire field can be harvested in a day by just a handful of people. Hoping for the chance to drive one of the cotton pickers, I thought they might let me take a turn, but unfortunately, they were in such a rush to get the field picked by the end of the day, I didn't even have a chance to ask. The three cotton picker machines go row by row, clearing the cotton. Once full, they dump their load into the following bowl buggy. The bull buggy then dumps the cotton into the cotton module builder, which uses the hydraulic compactor to compact the cotton into one solid module. Once full, the module builder pulls away, revealing the cotton module, ready for pickup, where it'll be taken to the cotton gin next. At the cotton gin, I was given a tour of the process by which the cotton lint is separated. The gin dries the cotton, separates any dirt, sticks, or other foreign objects, and uses small sharp blades to grab the cotton fiber, pulling it from the seeds, separating them. Then the isolated cotton fibers are collected, bundled into bales, and shipped out. The cotton seeds are kept by the cotton gin as payment and used for making cotton seed oil. Nia Sarah is able to see the, the full size one in action. Uh, now they have this small scale one so I can gin just my cotton. All right, so after using the uh, cotton gin, got several bags of cotton, separated cotton seeds and all the other junk from it. Now I just have just the part that I want, the cotton lint, should be ready to be spun into a fabric next. Unfortunately, I, I never ended up having the chance to drive one of the cotton machines that I was really hoping to. It's kind of a childhood dream of mine, but uh, I was able to find the next best thing. Hello there. I wanted to talk to you for a couple of minutes about the history of cotton harvest. First, there's hand harvesting cotton. The two methods of hand harvesting are different. The world's crop. And just think, it all started with this little guy right Hold on a sec. Module ready to be dropped. Module ready to be dropped. Module ready to be dropped. Yeah, what do I do? What do I do? 